Hi, welcome back to Five Minutes in the Word with Redeemed Girl Ministries, and I'm Marion Jordan Ellis. Well, in case you can't tell, I'm almost nine months pregnant, and uh, we've been filming these videos along the way as uh, the baby has grown and developed. And I must say, one of the sweetest uh, moments throughout the pregnancy was the day my husband and I went to the ultrasound. And the doctor took out this device and she rubbed it on my belly, and she was able to peer inside and see. Um, our little girl and she was able to tell us okay her heart is fully developed her lungs are developed she's this long and tell us that you know after all the mystery yes it's a girl and all of those things and I, it was just so mar marvelous to be able to see inside the womb and just get a glimpse at our child well today we're looking at the fact that our God sees and if you've been tracking along in our study of the characteristics of God, uh, we've been looking at his attributes, we've been looking at his character, we've been looking at what he does. But to stop and know that our God sees, not just us externally, he sees all of us, he knows all of us, he knows our innermost thoughts, he sees and knows us better than we know ourselves. And the Bible tells us before we were ever formed in our mother's womb, he saw us and he formed us. What the Bible also tells us is he sees not just our external, he sees to the depths of our hearts and he knows us fully. Well, today's verse talks about how we could be blind to our own intentions, we could be blind to our own sins, our own faults, but God, the one who sees all things, who knows all things, He knows everything about us and He sees every intention of our heart. Now, on one surface, that could be a little bit scary, right? You're know, like, oh my gosh, God saw what I thought. He saw my intention and my motive, and that wasn't very good. But what we're going to see from this text is, yes, there is truth that we can hide nothing from the God who sees. But there's also a great uh, blessing and a beauty that He Himself, the God who sees, He provides for us. Now, our verse is Hebrews 4. 13. But what I want to do today, because this is such a, a crucial verse, is I'm going to read the verse and then I'm going to go back and teach it in context to what's around it. Hebrews 4.13 says this, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. Now, that's that's a really significant verse. It says everything in all creation. That means you and me, that means every other human being, everything that God ever created, it's all laid bare before him. He sees it all. And it, it also says God sees everything and it's to him, to him alone, that we will give account for our, our lives. Nothing is hidden before him. Nothing is uh, done in darkness. Nothing is done in secret because he is the God who sees. Go with me if you have your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4 because the context of this is really, really important. In Hebrews 4, in verse 12, we first of all see that um, the writer of Hebrews is talking about the Word of God. And what's important to see is the Word of God is personified as a person. And we know from other places in Scripture that Jesus is given the title, the Word of God. And so it says in Hebrews 4 that the Word of God is living and active. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrows and able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Now, first of all, it tells us that the word of God that we hold in our hands, this is living and active. This is the breath of God and it can penetrate and see into the very depths of our heart. So the verse then that we're looking at today is in context to that and says, and there is no creature hidden from his sight. Who is his? The word of God. Remember, Jesus is called the word of God. And so the God who sees is Jesus Christ and his word is living and active. And so he sees into us and we see a mere reflection of who we are when we open his word. Now, I don't know about you, I stop there and I go, wow, God sees every motive. He sees what I did and why I did it. Some days that's not a really good thing. Some days I have really bad motives. Some days I'm thinking something about someone I sure hope no one ever knows, right? But here's 
the grace part. And the rest of this passage, it tells us that everything about us, our good deeds, our bad deeds, are laid bare before the Son of God. In verse 14 it says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted and all things are we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and we may find grace in our time of need. So what does this verse tell us? It tells us, yes, God sees us, every part of us. We, don't, we can't pretend, we can't hide. He sees us, but the same God who sees us and knows everything about us is also our great high priest who goes before us to the throne of grace and says, draw near to me. You're never going to be perfect. You're never going to, on your own, be able to change all of the spots in the darkness in your heart. That's my job. I stand before you to make you right, to make you clean. Yes, I see you. Yes, I know you. But you know what? I still love you. And I want you to draw near to me. I want you to come boldly with confidence to the throne of grace, knowing that I already see you, I already love you, and I love you just where you are.